snart ut i eten. Det gör vi nu. Varmt välkomna tillbaka kvinnokvällen i Göteborg i aktiespararnas regi. Vi har träffat en rad intressanta bolag och vi går vidare i samma anda och säger varmt välkommen till Aselio och hej och välkommen Tine Kato som är Sales Strategy Manager. Tack. Varmt välkommen, scenen är din. Tack så mycket. I'm going to do this presentation in, in English. I'm, I'm Danish and married a Swede last summer, just moved to Stockholm uh, about a year ago, so my Swedish pronunciation is still a bit rusty. I, I hope you'll bear with me, but any questions are welcome in, in Swedish afterwards. Um, so before I start, I want to just uh, ask you, so how, how many of you are interested in sustainable investments? All right, that's actually all of you. <laughs> that's a great start. And how many of you ha already have shares in renewable energy technology companies such as solar companies, wind companies, maybe even electric vehicles? Yes, also quite a lot of you, that's really great. How many of you have shares in Acelio? Let's try to change that. <laughs> all right, so uh, before I dive into what we do at Acelio, I want to tie just a few words to why I ended up working in clean tech and why I think it's very important that we fuel uh, a lot of capital into this specific field. So I've um, worked in clean tech for the past seven years in three different clean tech startups and joined Acelio in uh, January this year. Um, I've been working mostly with taking great new revolutionizing ideas from the drawing board to the market. And um, that's a journey I particularly enjoy um, because it's a great challenge and I love great challenges. Um, and um, it also has to do with the biggest challenge of my generation, which is, I believe, climate change. And for me, that's a challenge I really stood face to face with for the first time in 2009. I was lucky enough to be a part of the climate conference in Copenhagen, um, supporting the Office for Developing Countries. And after three intense weeks following these top politicians in the negotiations, I saw ministers and politicians just crying because the negotiations broke down. And that's when I realized, wow, this is such a big challenge, especially for the emerging markets that are very vulnerable to climate change. And I decided the best way I could be a part of the solution for this was to go into the private sector and um, help new great impact technologies reach the markets where they matter the most. So that's what I've been doing for the past seven years. And I've also been lucky to have quite senior positions uh, despite my age. So I've been the CEO of one of the companies and I've had four different board positions so far and several uh, advisory roles amongst others to the Danish government on technology policy. And right now I'm an expert advisor to the Solar Impulse Foundation, which is um, a platform for the best uh, technology solutions to solve climate change. Um, I'm a relatively new investor myself, um, but my investment philosophy is really to invest in the companies you uh, want to see bring the change. And that's why more than half of my own investment portfolio is impact technology companies, new technology companies that are up and coming and really solving these challenges head on. Yes. Um, another thing to say about investments in clean tech I think for those of you who already have shares, you probably noticed that it takes quite a lot of time to develop new technology to maturity. And it takes a lot of capital as well. Just look at Tesla or look at here in Sweden, Northwald, how much money they keep taking in to fuel their um, industrialization and setting up their production. And that's very true for a lot of different businesses, also for pharma, but in particular for, t for clean tech. And that's why it's such an important field to invest in. So who is Acelio and what do we do? So we've actually been around for 12 years. We were founded in Sweden. Originally, our name was Cleanergy. And all along, the legacy has been to convert different sources of clean energy into clean electricity. The first product was a gas box, which took biogas from landfills and converted that into uh, electricity via the Stirling engine you see on this picture. 
two years ago, we had the first demonstration of our newest uh, technology, which is the test pod. That's um, our newest storage technology that we are bringing to the market today. And the status on that is that we have three verification projects up and running with the test pod. One in Omal in our lab, one in Morocco, and one in Abu Dhabi. And this year, we are planning on signing our first small commercial projects with this technology. So far this year, we've signed 11 MOUs, and that means we've uh, committed around 200 and or 330 megawatts of capacity. Mm. We have a few strategic partners to help uh, us go to market. One of them is Masen, that's Morocco's uh, clean energy agency. And a great thing about working with Masen is they've been around for only 10 years, but they've managed to take the um, Moroccan energy mix from 4 to 45% clean energy in just 10 years. So that's the kind of partner we want to work with, and it's our door to the African uh, continent as well. Same goes for Master, which is a huge international conglomerate which will help us into our key countries in the MENA region. Um, next summer, we kickstart our um, series production in Udevala in an old, old Volvo factory, and the plan is to scale, scale up gradually up to uh, 35,000 units in 2024. So, the last half a year for us has been really good, partly because of uh, the many MOUs we have signed along the way. We have proven that there is traction in the market for this type of solution. Um, we, about a month ago, completed a new rights issue and took in 270 million SEC to fuel this industrialization that we are starting on now. And that has resulted in a share price which has just climbed and climbed. And curiosa here is uh, that uh, Asilio is actually the best performing share in my own portfolio, <laughs> just saying. So um, what kind of challenge are we addressing at Asilio? Um, it has been called the world's biggest business opportunity to invest in climate tech solutions. And the International Energy Agency says we'll need to invest some 22 trillion US dollars into fueling these renewable energy technologies for the clean energy transition towards 2050. And the reason for that is to stay below the 1.5 degrees Celsius, to stay away from inevitable uh, global warming um, effects. Um, so there is a lot of business opportunity here in taking part in that clean energy transition away from fossil fueled powered energy today into solar, PV, or wind powered electricity. And um, apart from that obvious challenge and the money that goes into, into that, um, there are a lot of countries in the world where they are not connected to the grid or they have weak grids. Um, and that's a challenge if you're a business owner, if you have a factory, if you're trying to produce something, if you're running a farm. And that's the kind of people that we help with our solution. This is uh, an illustration of what the solution actually is. It, com it consists of two parts. There is the storage uh, part, which is on the top of the page. You can imagine a big a uh, chunk of aluminum, basically. And uh, the way it works is that you take electricity from, for instance, uh, solar panels, and then you heat up the storage part, the aluminum. It's heated up to 600 degrees in a very well-insulated tank. And then um, the molten aluminum uh, stays warm, and when you need it, you can convert the heat from the aluminum into clean power with the Stirling engine. So that's how it works. Those are the two components, the storage tank and the engine. And what it delivers is 13 hours of uh, energy storage. Uh, why is that so revolutionizing? Well, other uh, energy storage technologies such as lithium ion, which is the commercially viable solution on the market, offers four to six hours. So that means if you charge your storage solution during midday, from solar panels, you can store that electricity for un until the early night hours. But with this kind of solution, you can have access to clean power 24-7. And that's quite a um, 
interesting uh, solution when you look at the commercial and industrial segments. People who need power 24-7 for mining, for industrial processes, well, basically any kind of client who need to power their facilities 24-7 uh, will need a storage solution with more than six hours of storage. Um, the reason why storage is important in the clean energy transition is you can deploy so much wind, so much solar, but at the end of the day, the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. So what do you do then at nighttime or when the wind is low? Well, the truth is today people power their countries or industries with fossil fuels. Um, in my home country, a coal still today, which is sad. So if you can store the surplus electricity from wind or solar during the day, you don't have that problem. So that's why it's a vital part in that uh, transition. Um, another great advantage with this technology is it has zero degradation and zero emissions. We just published um, a life cycle assessment on our technology which looks into um, carbon emissions in the production, lifetime and decommissioning of the product, and it has a significantly lower carbon footprint than, for example, lithium-ion and, of course, diesel generators, which is the benchmark technology used out there, which is the technology that we are replacing right now. No degradation basically means you don't have to swift out the product during its 30-year lifetime, as you do with lithium, so it, it doesn't get, um, get worse in performance, that there's no degradation in performance. The target markets we're aiming for with this solution, well, our drivers are basically a few things. One is uh, good solar radiation resources, because the installed solar PV capacity is driving the need for storage. So that means in the countries where you get a lot of effect from your solar PV and where they're installing a lot of PV, that's where we want to go. And those markets count the US, Australia in the developed world, MENA region, that's uh, Middle East, North Africa, um, as well as Latin America. The end users or the people who buy this type of solution or benefit from this type of solution, uh, we have a few key segments that we're focusing on. We're focusing on mining, uh, agriculture, resorts, oil and gas, hospitals, uh, refugee camps, um, and existing solar PV plants. Um, the way that we go to market is with strategic partners. We can't go out there and sell to every farmer in the world, then we'll run out of uh, money very, very soon. So we go to big strategic partners like uh, EDF or Total, uh, people who have the project development capacities and the financing um, to help us finance projects with our technology. At the end of the day, this is uh, renewable energy infrastructure and our technology is one component in that energy mix. So you'll need solar PV, you'll need the storage, you'll need distribution, you'll need control systems. So it's a part of a bigger project solution. So what we are planning on is um, to go to market via these strategic partners who will help us in identify the projects uh, for us in our local markets that we have identified. And we are planning on producing up to 300 megawatts of capacity in our Udevala factory from two years from now and onwards. And uh, right now we have uh, the 330 megawatts of committed capacity already um, and about four gigawatts of interest from the market, which is uh, in our current sales pipeline. So that is what it looks like uh, right now. That's all actually about Asilio, and I hope that you um, got some, some interesting insights into clean tech and what we're doing in the company in general. I think it's a, a very exciting journey that we have ahead of us, and there's a lot of market traction, so I hope you'll continue following us in the future.